So we'd like to open up the conversation now and invite anybody um, on the board, anybody in the audience. Let's start with the board and then go to the audience. Um, any comments people would like to make, suggestions, um, so that as we close this meeting at 12, we have a sense of a plan to go forward. Yes, Representative Kirkley Bay. Thank you, Lane. First of all, I mean, I think the information that was provided to us today was excellent by all of the speakers. And I think that we need to be able, and I'm seeing this different departments here, they need to be able to grasp this and say, okay, what can my department do to help on these issues? And how can I bring that to the attention of the governor or those who are in the places that we can make this happen? This is not new, as it was said by, eloquently by uh, Dr. Carter. I mean, I would like to invite everybody that's on this panel to come to my community center, which is in the poorest neighborhood in Hartford, which I represent the poorest in the state. And you just look at the conditions that these kids live in every day. And you don't have to listen to the statistics. You can see it for yourself with blighted buildings and whatnot. We feed our kids every day because sometimes those are the only meals that they get. And the reading and the stuff that's going on in the school system is atrocious. These kids did not even know what Thanksgiving is because it's not on the, it's not on the CR, the test, the Connecticut Mastery Test. They don't know the Pledge of Allegiance because it's not on the test. They don't know who Christopher Columbus is because it's not on the test. So, I mean, you know, what are you testing to? We all learned all that stuff when we were in school. We had a much wider, broader perspective of what life is. These kids don't have it. My kids live in a seven block radius. You go cross that radius and you're in somebody else's territory. They don't even go to the South End because you're not wanted down there. So there's a lot of things that we in urban areas are living with. But I want to say something. I have been saying for 10 years, you take care of a mother who's a single parent and give her the support and she will raise children who have their head on straight. Having done that myself at two different times in my life, I know that that's true. For 10 years, nobody has listened. Thanks to Elaine and the work of the commission and others, they're starting to see that 60% of the households are single women. We have got to provide the strength and the support that family needs. And when 36% of the people who are homeless are working, that is disgusting. In the richest state in the country, with three of its major cities in, in, in the top forest, Hartford, New Haven, and Bridgeport, I think they are. We're all up there. And it is disgusting. It's disgusting. Nobody ever asks us urban legislators what we think. We live it every day. There's nobody up there who does, lives what we live. You all go home to nice houses. You all go home to maybe two-car garages and all this stuff. These kids don't even have a place to play without broken bottles and glass. You need to come down into the trenches. You need to put on this committee some neighborhood community people who understand this, because I'm saying the people who spoke today, but to Mr. McGee, that, uh, the Meadows was built for the suburbs. It was not built for the city. 90% of the kids who go there come from out of town because those are the acts that come in there. And they disrupt the city, cause problems and everything, and we have to take care of it, and Hartford gets quoted as the place. Drugs is now becoming, wait, drugs is now becoming a problem in the Avon, Canton, and other places. Oh, now that it's down in the cities, we need to take care of drugs. We've been saying it for 40 years. You need to take care of drugs. But it never affects anybody until it hits a white community. Why? Because we are considered, and I'm going to say it, as disposable people. We are considered as shadows. People of color are not considered equal to people who are not of color. I've been here 16 years, and I know that for a fact. I know that for a fact. The things I say, sometimes said by someone else, exactly the same, has more power because they're white and I was black. You need to get your act together. You need to realize that we are all people who have understanding of these human events, and many of us have lived it. They have not watched the Hartford school systems. My son left when he was 16. He is now in his 40s. And every generation after that has been lost. And now you think, oh, well, we're going to solve it. 
I want to watch this, I tell you. I hope I'm here for four or five more years so I can watch this. I want, and I want you to come down to my community center. I'm not throwing this out for funsies or to be fit. I want you to come see what it is to live in the ghetto. My name's Barbara Baru, and I'm going to share with you something that both my German grandmothers said to me. Man kann alles, was man ernstlich will. You can do everything you really want to. And I think that we have lack of the will. There's no question in my mind. But we all have responsibility for that. We are in the deficit situation we're in because we did not spend money wisely. Children should always be first. The role of the ruling government should be, does this help or does this hurt our children? And if it hurts our children, we shouldn't be doing it. I sat at a sentencing in a superior court on Friday, and I watched a judge send a loving father to jail for 21 months as revenge. It's a long, complicated story, but the money we're going to spend on this man's incarceration would send his child through college. We need to look through different glasses. We have bricks and mortars in our school buildings that we don't use. Schools could be the center of the community. Children should not be let out of school at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. They don't have anything to do on Saturday. They should be in school, like in Japan and many parts of Europe. Our children are ignorant. They only speak one language. We need to invest in education. We need to look at it differently. If, if a child can finish high school in three years, let them out. Send them to community college for two years. In the town of Weathersfield, it would save us about $7,000. Thank goodness. We have to look at new models. We're, we're running an educational system on an agrarian model. It's crazy. We need to look at teaching people nutrition. Our children should not be going hungry. If we don't manage food money right because we don't know about nutrition, how can we feed our children? Pea soup may not be the greatest thing in the world, but it's very nutritious and it's very cheap. Fortunately, I like it. <laughs> we, need to, we need to talk and educate people about the most preventable health problem, 100% preventable health problem. Mothers who drink alcohol during pregnancy put their children at risk, even a little bit. And just because children don't have the features of fetal alcohol syndrome doesn't mean they don't have the and we deal with their explosive, uncontrollable behavior as teenagers. And I'm going to say something very politically incorrect and controversial. Birth control reduces poverty. We have children having children. I have met a 28-year-old grandmother. I had an 11-year-old client who, before she turned 12, was pregnant for the second time. When are we going to stop talking about it? When are we going to stop re issuing reports? When are we going to stop looking at statistics? And when are we just going to plain do it? In the judicial department, for years we talked about filing papers by fax. Can't do it, can't do it, too complicated, too hard. 9-11 came and the anthrax disaster, and one day we woke up and there was a fax filing mechanism set up across the state. Like magic. So 